Welcome to the Money GPS. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today, I've got some important information. The first thing I want to look at is the stock market madness and what's been going on. Paul Tudor Jones, one of the most successful investors of all time, had some words to say, and that's what I'll lead off with. The second thing is the inflation bubblation. Yes, I did make up my own word, but we're going to talk about all of that and more. Let's begin right here by taking a look at what Paul Tudor Jones had to say. Apparently, he can't think of a worse financial environment for stocks or bonds right now. This individual is extremely successful over a very long period of time. Very few people can get it right uh, you know, throughout the bull and bear markets. So you could see that his quote is exactly that you can't think of a worse environment than where we are right now for financial assets. Clearly, you don't want to own bonds and stocks. Okay, so he's really saying this and all he's trying to highlight the fact that you look at what's going on with inflation. You see what the Federal Reserve has to do. You look at where interest rates are, rock bottom right now. This is you know, a catch-22. This is being put into a corner. Whatever analogy you wanna use, that's where we are at today. What is the solution to all of it? Well, we don't really know. Is this stagflation? Is that the direction? I think we're in one of those very difficult periods where simple capital preservation is, I think, the most important thing that we could strive for. I don't know if it's going to be one of those periods where you're actually trying to make money. He's not saying that you can't make money or that you won't be able to make money. He's saying that the goal should be how much of my wealth can I keep during this period until we go back to more quantitative easing, essentially. Look bubble hitting 50% of the market. Top investor warns as the Fed gets ready to meet. As you are watching this video, the Federal Reserve is either about to put that whole 50 basis point hike in place or you know that'll be you know who knows when you when you've seen it anyway, but that's what's going to happen that is going to affect the markets not just in the United States but all around the world. Here we have it. Go back and look at the history of bubbles. They don't softly correct and then are off to the races six months later. You typically see a major correction, you know, 50% or more, and typically it comes with an overshoot. They're probably going, uh, they're probably a lot more downside to go. Now, I just wanted to make something very clear. When you look at it on a more short term time frame, it looks that markets have gone a little overboard and oversold, as they would say. But this is something that could change at any moment. I'm just showing you right here. This happens to be the S&P 500, where we could see that it has declined from its recent peak that was experienced on March 29th and has gone down ever since. The last couple trading sessions, it's done a little bit better, but this is all in anticipation of what the Federal Reserve does and has to, uh, will do. And the expectation here is a 50 basis point rate hike. If the Federal Reserve goes for the 75, which is extremely unlikely, that would shock the markets. If it goes for a 25 basis point hike, that would be considered dovish. And what's going on? We're going to experience higher inflation as a result. Markets might get worried about that as well. 50 basis points is the expectation. We'll see what happens. And just to clarify for anybody who doesn't know, 50 basis points being 0.5%. So what we can look at right now, these are the four broad US indexes. Essentially, this is going to be a determining factor. What happens with the Fed? Is this a near-term bottom and will bounce up? Or are we going to see this fall down? So by the time that meeting comes out, I think it will be a little bit of a better indicator. If you take some of these stocks right over here during this period, where this happens to be Amazon, we are at you know around this 2485 range, and uh, that was last experienced in May of 2020. You look at other stocks that were doing so fantastic. I was just looking at this one today after reading an article. This is Clorox. You remember, oh, everybody needs sanitizer, everybody needs bleach and whatever uh, other products that this company sells. You look at this, oh, it's so important. So what happened? You see March 2020, this huge rise up, massive, okay, massive. And then what has happened ever since? And then you look at all the reports that are done in the media. And this is the reason why I mentioned this. 
look very carefully at what the reports show you, you could see that this stock has been falling since August of 2020. It's been falling further, further, and further. Yes, there's been bounces along the way, but look at that direction. And so just recently they mentioned, oh, well, you know, because of inflation, their input costs are higher. That's going to affect this particular stock. Oh, no, it has nothing to do with the fact that maybe it didn't deserve to be at that extremely high level back in August of 2020. Oh, no, it's because of the input costs. So we're always taking a step further and think to yourself, are they really analyzing this accurately? Sometimes that isn't the case. Stocks and bonds are falling in lockstep at a pace unseen in decades. Bonds have long been viewed as a hedge against expected swings in stocks. That hedge evaporated this year. Very interesting time that we are in right now. It isn't often that we do see these things happen. Annual gains and losses for stocks and bonds. And you could see this right now going back from 2008. You know, you either see both of them gaining, as we've seen a lot of, but to see both of them losing doesn't necessarily happen that, that often. You could see treasury yields um, going up really um, significantly over the period, over the past, let's say, year or so. That just shows us what's happening as, as it relates to, you know, debt. Because for such a period of time, we were watching interest rates being at rock bottom and in real terms into negative and you had all these negative yielding bonds it's crazy and now that has come around and changed there's now you know you're not going to find those negative yielding bonds anymore index performance in 2022 just look at that dow smp and the nasdaq it's it, it is quite significant to see how bad this has become why though well, of course, what the Federal Reserve, and you extend that around the world, what they have done, the central banks, is of, it's, it's, it's the most important thing. And I, I want to thank you for being this far into the video. This is the key. Please understand that, okay? Just for the record, the size of the Fed's balance sheet does not drive Wall Street, but the size of the Fed's net liquidity injections do. And that, my friends, is so important. Look at that. This is the net liquidity injection. So, so when they're pumping that cash in, that's when the market loves it. But just having a $9 trillion balance sheet isn't going to drive the market further. I hope that makes sense, okay? And then just this really quickly. This is just showing us Clorox stock falls. Inflation will take a bite of its profits, okay? So like I showed you a second ago, I put that in front of this. All you need to know is that you must pay attention to what's happening with the reports to analyze it a step further with what they are giving you, okay? Now, let's talk about the bubblation. All right, what's going up? I mean, basically everything. Get ready for another energy price spike. High electricity bills, okay? This is, I mean, I know, I know about this, trust me. And I've heard it from you, no matter where you are around the world. Let me know. Are you experiencing higher electricity bills? And any information that you can put in the comments below. This I love those type of comments because the conversations start happening and people start creating solutions and things. I, th I think it's fantastic. And it just shows you that the national average res residential electricity rate was up 8% in January from a year earlier. And this is just one thing. Just one. You look at, okay, my food prices are up 20%. My electricity prices are up 10%. My this is up 10%, 20%, 30%. And it's crazy. All of it at once. And then this is when we get into the twilight zone. Okay, this is a bizarro world. This is, just, I mean, I can't believe this. Global chip shortage's latest worry. Too few chips for chip making. Yes, that's right. You need the semiconductors. You need those chips to have to be put in the machines that make the chips. I mean, what the heck is going on? Honestly, what is going on? This one, this is getting weird. This is getting really weird. Here we are, two years out. All the lockdowns, there's no, the lockdowns aren't happening anymore. Most places around the world, we are not seeing those 
you know, significant lockdowns and, you know, people working uh, outside, you know, you know, bad hours and all those things, like early 2020 time frame where things were, okay, yeah, people aren't driving on the streets and all that. That largely isn't happening today. Yes, there are people working at home and things, but those those businesses have streamlined everything. It's just, what? I don't know what to say about it. I wanted to mention this right here a little bit. Um, I think it will be of interest to, to some people. Invesco launches ETF focused on metals required for electric vehicles and energy transition. So as... Uh, countries and, and people and investors, they go towards this uh, green energy. They've actually built an ETF around this. And if you believe that, you know, this is something that you know, more money will go into, whether, you know, you, you like it or not or whatever, keep your eye on it. Not this particular ETF, but, but where the money goes, the money flow, I should say. I should, let's see if it has a... E-V-M-T is the ticker, okay? And I'm not vouching for that at all. I'm, I'm only, I see the trends and I want to see what happens. Just like I've talked about with uranium, uranium stocks, I've been talking about that for a while. It's And the reason I mentioned that is because of green energy. Governments are throwing billions and potentially trillions of dollars over the next de few decades into green energy. And will uranium see that? I believe so. They're going to consider it to be ESG. Money earmark. This, this is talking about personal finances. Money earmark for a major purchase purchase in months' time should be generally something more conservative, meaning it's insulated from market whiplash. Quote, we always say, are you comfortable if that $100,000 turns into $60,000 right at the time you need to write that tuition check? The answer is always no. And this is why I always say to people, you know, you think to yourself, okay, I have stocks, let's say. Okay, I have these stocks, it's $100,000 worth of stocks, it's a million dollars worth of stocks. I don't need to worry because I can always sell it. But the time you need to sell it, is it when it's at its peak or when it's at its bottom or when it's, you know, doing performing poorly? It's always the time when it's performing poorly. Let's be honest. It's never at the peak. Oh, I need my cash right now today. <laughs> Luckily, it's at the highest, the all-time high. I'll sell it right now. It doesn't happen like that. And the time when you, oh, I'll just, I won't sell. I'll borrow. I love that one. I'm going to borrow against my assets. But the times that you need to borrow are when interest rates are up and it's very expensive to borrow against those assets. Natural gas surges 9% to the highest level since 2008. Look at the prices. You can see it for yourself. It's going up in a straight line. We we've, we've seen these prices before, but it is significant. Okay, your your natural gas barbecues, your your furnaces, everything. Uh, this is you know, I mean, we're moving away from furnaces, moving more into the barbecues, but still, it is significant. Gas ranges and so on. Record fuel exports from the U.S. Gulf Coast drain tanks at home. Okay, this is something that I always find interesting. Where so much of, you know, what businesses do, they, they send that product outward, not just, um, you know, any type of fuel, any any commodity, in fact. It's being sent away, and then I feel that, in some cases, uh, increases the price for domestic, you know, people domestically. I didn't have time to cover this. If you have a moment, check out this Crescat a capital article, I will put it in the description below, but you can see right now, commodity producers, free cash flow. It is three times higher than what we saw during this, you know, 2004, 2005 timeframe. Right now, significant. The, the amount of cash that these companies have, it, it it is something to behold, okay? There's a lot of detail, tons and tons of really easy to read charts, um, you could see that right here. There, there was a few I wanted to check out. Commodities to equities ratio. Take a look. I mean, <laughs> we'll see. I mean, that has turned up. You could see how it has turned up. But um, if if this is the case, like this is what it, what they called, um, who was it, Goldman Sachs? The beginning of a, and now I can't remember the term. Basically, 
we bottomed out and we are going much, much, much higher for commodities. Some do believe that this is the case. And right now, as I'm recording this video, can't believe this super, super cycle, super cycle. I think that was the term for commodities, commodity super cycle. I believe that was it. Look at this. Median operating margins by commodity producer at the top of the list. Precious metals, 27%. Okay, silver versus commodities. Commodities have risen considerably. Silver, on the other hand, has not been uh, feeling the love so much. Anyway, it goes on. I think it's interesting just to see what's happening, particularly with commodities today and with the expectation it could go higher, but don't go anywhere. Hold on, wait. I just gave you all that. All you got to do, hit that thumbs up to support the channel. That's all I'm asking. Are you subscribed yet? Oh my goodness gracious, I can't believe it. If not, right down there, where is it? Let me let me click that for you. Hit that subscribe button, and I will bring you information every single day of the week. See you on the next one. Take care.